The war on the Second Amendment heats up. Well, guys, it looks like the federal government is uh, at it again, this time uh, wanting to use the ATF, of course, to go after certain firearms that have uh, short barrels. Of course, that's where I came from, Gun Owners of America, and I'll be leaving some links in the description box. Now, guys, I know I told you guys before that we're going to be heading into military movie reviews, but I did also say that occasional videos like this right here would still come out. Of course, Second Amendment updates and, of course, military updates. Uh, it seems like mostly reactions, but, of course, the bulk of this channel is, of course, going to be military movie reviews. But we still talk about the Second Amendment, and we still talk about prepping and survival topics here on this channel, albeit, though, a little bit fewer and far between. Don't worry, this video right here will be left in the comment section. But that there being said, though, let's go ahead and get on to this topic. Now, guys, this weekend... Uh, and the, getting this news right here just is just another example of the federal government once again trying to overreach and trying to uh, take control of your lives. Not to mention the fact that now all of a sudden they want to try to uh, ban gas stoves, even though 70% of the country uses electric. Just some very, very crazy stuff. Fact of the matter is this right here. This right here is just another annoyance and another nuisance. Now, guys, I am not posting this video and talking to you guys through the camera for the sole purpose of black pilling you or white pilling you or red pilling you. I'm here to be absolutely realistic with you. We have been beating the federal government a lot. I mean, we have been beating them like crazy, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. You had the Bruin case. We've had a lot of cases that, quite frankly, we've won. And I don't see how in the world this right here is another case that, quite frankly, we cannot win. So I put this right here up here right now. And you basically got uh, three to four options here. The fourth option being just good old-fashioned mass non-compliance. I would not comply with this because, number one, it's probably going to get tossed out here soon. Anyway, someone's going to file a lawsuit. I'm pretty sure that, that right there is coming. And I'm pretty sure that the Supreme Court or Circuit Court is probably going to is probably going to strike this nonsense down and say, hey, look, there is nothing on the books that quite frankly says that this right here is illegal. Not to mention the fact that you now have a Republican Congress, which, by the way, would not have the balls to even try to pass this through Congress, while at the same time, even though you have a Democrat Senate, that Senate is not going to be able to get the 60 votes to actually pass this type of crap in the law, unless, of course, you have a few more Judases. But then again, though, there are Judases and rhinos in the Republican Party. Now, gang, let me throw this out here, okay? I am going to sound a little bit hypocritical here, but bear with me for a second, because trust me, there is a method to my madness here. You see, the real reason why I wanted to make this particular video was not just to update you on what the hell was going on, but my biggest problem is, of course, with the other option saying uh, register it. You see, most people are not going to swap it. Most people are not going to turn it in. Okay, Most people are obviously not going to comply. But you will get some people out there who think uh, that they can just register this particular uh, piece of equipment, this particular brace, or this particular firearm, and they think that the federal government's not going to come after them. But guys, somebody in the comment section is probably going to say, but you said a long time ago that when you fill out that FFL form, that right there is pretty much a gun registry. Well, not so much exactly. Basically, the only thing the FFL form does is just prove that you have a firearm. However, it does not explicitly say what firearm you have, and you can also leave your Social Security number off of it. Also, to go on top of that, people oftentimes, they move and stuff like that right there. And, of course, the record is not exactly the same. I mean, if I buy a firearm, say, like four years ago, and let's just say I move from the current location that I'm at, the file that they have is the address I was staying at when I bought that weapon. I just figured I would throw that out there. What a gun registry is, which, by the way, I'm completely against. I mean, you guys know my channel. You guys know me. I'm a very, very pro Second Amendment person. If you follow me on John Claymore... You will also know that I've spoken about these school shootings and whatnot, and I've already told you guys before what I think needs to happen. People need to be at the schools armed to protect our friggin' kids, not just some cop that's out of shape and is about to retire. I'm all about people being armed. An armed society is a safe society. The thing you got to understand is that, once again, you got a bunch of leftoids out there screaming and hollering, saying we need to get rid of this and we need to get rid of that right there. These right here are the photos of exactly what types of firearms would probably get banned as a result of this. As a matter of fact, they, signed a, they tried to sign a, a law in the Congress, I think it was a year ago, trying to say that it was a, a certain type of weapon ban, but it ended, up, it ended up covering just about every single long rifle, just some very, very crazy crap. Like These people don't, have, don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Or it's very possible that they do know exactly what the hell they're doing, and they just keep getting blunted by, uh, by, the, by the federal government or how our government actually works. You can't pass the type of legislation without 60 votes. And, of course, these people obviously know this. And, obviously, you've got people who may be Democrats who are in red states who are not going to vote in favor of any type of AR-15 ban. All you got to do is go back and take a look at what happened after Sandy Hook 
when uh, Diane Feinstein's AR-15 ban could not pass the Senate when Obama had like 51 or 50, had 53 Democrat senators at that time, and he had two more independents that were caucusing with Democrats. Just go ahead and let you guys know, give you guys some broader context. It's one of the main reasons why I don't think anything like an AR-15 ban is ever going to occur, nor even red flag laws. They're going to get shot down at the Supreme Court, and same as that way, I think this one right here is going to get shot down at the Supreme Court. But the thing about a gun registry is this right here. It requires you not only to give up your current address, but it also requires you to give the federal government the current firearm that you have as far as the type is there. And, it, uh, and of course, law enforcement is going to look at this and they're going to say, well, I guess we got to prep for this guy. we got six of us, so we have to take down this one guy, which is really, quite frankly, unfair. But if they were ever going to try to do a door-to-door -door confiscation, that right there is how the hell they would try to do it. They would try to do it five or six officers at once, showing up to your home, trying to bully you into giving up, their file, or giving up your firearms. I've already said before that this right here is a completely unrealistic prospect because you got over 400 million guns going around in circulation. And, uh, of course, guys have, uh, have equipment, of course, in their house, stuff like the short barrel weapons, the braces, which, by the way, I'm completely okay with. You guys can buy whatever the hell you want. I'm okay with the force reset trigger. Buy whatever the hell you can. I mean, dude, I'm as pro second as you can get. The only time I'm okay with a gun law of any type is when you want to restrict somebody who may have like a criminal past from getting one, but that right there is a different topic altogether. That right there is the reason why you have the FFL background check, but still at the same time though, this right here is just another good old-fashioned nuisance. So yeah, guys, this right here is just another nuisance. It's just another annoyance out there that we have to deal with. It's probably not going to go anywhere. It's more than likely going to shit go, more than likely going to get shot down in the Supreme Court. As I've said before, I would not comply with this right here. I would not register. I wouldn't do anything because it is an executive order. By the way, and this right here is the most important thing. People need to understand that executive orders are just simply executive orders. They go no further than the executive branch of the government. Can they affect you? Yes. But at the same time, though, you have to understand that executive orders get shot down the Supreme Court all the time. And once again, this right here is just another unconstitutional order being passed down through the ATF, which, by the way, is an extremely small branch that is just going to be, uh, let's just say, going to continue to cause more headaches like they did over the solid trap ordeal in Florida. By the way, I'm still a little bit pissed off with DeSantis on that right there. I'm also pissed off with Trump over that whole bump stock ban in 2018. I don't even know if I've even brought that up. But once again, just another annoyance. By the way, speaking of that bump stock ban, that right there got struck down. That right there got struck down by a lower court. And I'm pretty sure that that right there may have actually been the indication behind that uh, that ordeal was, in fact, that maybe, uh, maybe it was possible that he kind of knew it was going to get shut down. Either way, though, you should never, ever, ever at any point in time entertain the left on anything, especially when it comes to guns. Now, guys, let me end this video on this note here. We're going to win this fight. All right. We are going to win this fight. Fight. I do not believe our Second Amendment is ever going to be taken from us. They're going to try to restrict it. They're going to try to go out of their way to uh, take firearms away from us. But we keep beating these people in court. And that right there is the purpose behind this video is not to blackpill you, but to maybe give you some form of uh, motivation in the future. Try to give you guys a bit of a nice little outlook in the future. They are not going to beat us. The federal government is not going to win this fight. Not against gun owners, not against Second Amendment people. And I've even got a project that I'm working on based on the Second Amendment. Second Amendment itself, as far as the explanation and the reasons why it is that uh, we need to have our Second Amendment and why it is so important. But that uh, that project will more than likely go on John Claymore. Guys, I'm going to leave the Taking Chance video in the comment section of this video here, or I may leave it in the description box. I'm not entirely sure. Also, leave a link to that channel there. I haven't done a video like this right here in a while, mostly due to the fact that I've had some uh, mouth work done. And of course, I've been kind of a, a little bit weak. And of course, I've been a little bit busy. With that right there being said, it's time to get our strength back up. Guys, like I said, don't get black put on this. If you like this content, hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new here. Also, at the same time, hit the notifications bell. So that way you guys are notified when my videos come out. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. We'll get you guys thoughts. On that.